Hello everyone, uh, I'm Marta and today I would like to talk a bit about the very beginning of probably one of the most unique features that characterized uh, our species, which is the locomotion on two legs. However, I cannot talk about this uh, without talking about the evolution of the positional behaviors of hominoids, the group or clade including apes and humans. So therefore, uh, if we want to talk about the origin of the terrestrial bipedal behaviors of modern humans, we need to answer this question, when and how did we start to walk bipedally? And to do so, I would like us to move back in time until the Miocene, an epoch that ranges from 23 until 5 million years ago, more or less. But more specifically, I would like uh, we stop in the Middle Miocene, around 15, 12 million years ago. And why the Middle Miocene? Well, uh, it is uh, just in this geological time when we first uh, registered the first hominids, which is the group of primates that includes the living orangutans, chimpanzees, bonobos, gorillas, and us humans. And we not only find the first uh, hominids in the, in the medial Miocene, but also the first undoubted evidences of something called orthography, and I will talk about it later. So therefore, uh, we could say that we have in the Middle Miocene the starting evolutionary point for the origin of the orthograde positional behaviors, including human terrestrial bipedalism. So uh, let's make a short break here to explain what we consider an orthograde primate. Nowadays, uh, we can classify primates in two different groups uh, on the basis of their body plan, uh, and thus we have pronograde and orthograde primates. Roughly, uh, we can say that pronograde primates move with the trunk parallel to the substrate and they usually use their forelegs to do so. This means uh, that this body plan is commonly associated with quadrupedal behaviors. In taxonomical terms and only considering anthropoid mo uh, primates, pronograde primates are those called monkeys the African and Asian Thercopithecoids, or Old World Monkeys, and the Platyrrhines, or New World Monkeys, from South America. On the other hand, uh, orthograde primates have an upright or erected position, and this means that the trunk is generally placed perpendicular to the substrate. All orthograde primates have in common uh, a high mobility of the joints and share a wide variety of locomotor behaviors or locomotor modes, such as um, vertical climbing, below branch suspension, or the typical one of our species, bipedalism. Within this group of primates, we have uh, the apes, including uh, hylobatids or lesser apes, which are the gibbons and siamans uh, from Southeast Asia, the great apes, uh, orangutans and chimpanzees, uh, bonobos and gorillas, and humans. Well, uh, interestingly, uh, the different locomotor types that we currently observe in the living species have particular prints in this skeleton that um, allows us to identify the different adaptations that characterized um, each locomotor mode and thus make inferences on extinct species. In our case, the acquisition of a, of a bipedal positional behavior, as you see in the slide, including postural and locomotor behaviors, implies a huge reorganization of the skeleton in relation to our ancestral quadrupedal condition, and we can trace uh, these skeletal adaptations in the fossil record to identify uh, potential bipedal species. Well, uh, if we take a closer look to the skeleton of an orthograde primate, we can see that uh, apes and humans share a set of both morphological and biomechanical skeletal adaptations. You can see in the slide a few of the most diagnostic traits uh, shared by hominoids. Among them, uh, I would like to highlight a few of them important to understand the hominoid fossil record. We all hominoids uh, share a wide and shallow uh, thorax with strongly curved ribs and the scapula placed uh, dorsally. We also have longer forelimbs than hind limbs with highly mobile joints. Finally, uh, we have a short and stiff lumbar region and lack an external tail. Well, after that little detour, uh, let's go back to the Miocene because we could consider this epoch the gold period of apes, uh, since we had an incredibly high diversity of species. This was the real planet of the apes, actually. 
Uh, you can see in the slide that hominoids diverged from the Cercopithecoids around 25 million years ago, around the boundary between the Oligocene and the Miocene in Africa. And later on, hominoid, uh, hominoids split into hylobatids and hominids around 20 million years ago. You can also see in this map uh, of Africa and Eurasia some of the better known uh, fossil sites where hominoids have been recovered. Hominoids were much more diverse in, uh, and much more widely distributed in the past. They spread into Africa, Europe and Asia in the Miocene, whereas they are now a group uh, restricted to specific areas of Central Africa and Southeast Asia. Moreover, we have recorded almost 50 species of extinct hominoids in the fossil record uh, against the barely 19 that we have nowadays. You can see in the slide uh, some of them. And I just wanted to show you here the great diversity of fossil hominoids in the past, but we will talk only about these three. Morotopithecus, Pyrolapithecus and this group at the bottom right, which are the hominins because uh, in some way uh, or another are important to the evolution of modern human bipedalism. Well, uh, jumping to the early Miocene of Kenya, back to around 20 million years ago, we find the African Afropithecid Morotopithecus. This species uh, is known from dentognatic material, uh, but also a few of postcranial elements. Among these postcranial uh, elements, paleontologists recover this lumbar vertebra, an essential anatomical element to, the, to identify orthography. This vertebra is very interesting because its uh, transversal process, which is this prolongation here, um, origins dorsally to the vertebral body, a trait uh, which is typical of orthograde primates. So therefore, we can consider uh, this species the first orthograde hominoid. But nonetheless, evidences are not 100% clear and doubts still remain about this designation. Well, uh, to find the first species that we can say is an orthograde uh, without doubts, we need to move to the middle Miocene of Europe. In Spain, we find Pyrolapithecus, this partial skeleton that unites a series of traits um, associated with an upright body plan. Among them, uh, Pyrolapithecus, also has a, um, a vertebra with a transfer process arising dorsally to the vertebral body, but also shows uh, long uh, and curved ribs, a long and stiff clavicle, and some of the features related to this type of body plan and shirt with extant hominoids. Well, at the end of the Miocene, around seven, six million years ago, we find the first uh, hominins, which are those taxa directly included in the human lineage. Generally, uh, early hominins uh, suggest that bipedalism was present in the human lineage by the beginning of the Pliocene, although it was not probably the main positional behavior mode in this taxa. Among these early hominins, we have Sahelanthropus from Chad, which is quite controversial. Some features of its uh, reconstructed skull uh, could suggest a caudal position of the foramen magnum, but its postcranial remains don't look like bipedal-like. Well, Aurorin is known from some teeth and some postcranial elements too. It was found in Kenya and dated in at around uh, 6 million years ago. This femur uh, that you see in the slide have some features clearly related to bipedal behaviors. Finally, between the end of the Miocene of, and the beginning of the Pliocene, we have Ardipithecus. Ardipithecus is represented by two different species, but the youngest one, dated in around 4.4 million years ago, is better represented. This partial skeleton combines a mix of primitive and derived features, some of them uh, associated with arboreal behaviors and others with bipedal behaviors, respectively. In all these three cases, uh, it is clear that although bipedal, these hominins might not be habitual bipeds and combine this locomotor type with others such as climbing. Well, however, it is in the Pleistocene when habitual bipedalism may have evolved over 4 million years ago. The 4.2 million year old Australopithecus anamensis fossils have some features at the tibia that are undoubtedly like those of modern uh, bipeds. 
a little bit later, at around 3.6 million years ago, we have um, the famous light only footprints track in Tanzania that clearly belongs to modern bipeds. But nonetheless, uh, some anatomical traits uh, suggest uh, a less refined, uh, less efficient bipedalism compared with that of modern humans, uh, an anatomy that um, uh, retains some adaptations to, to arboreal locomotion. In any case, uh, we can find the anatomy associated with modern human bipedalism uh, when the first uh, species of our genus emerged. The oldest clear evidence that we have is that of the skeleton of the Nariokotome boy, you can see him in the slide, dated in around 1.6 million years ago and recovered also in Kenya. Homo species already saw the whole set of anatomical features related to our type of locomotion. Well, uh, after seeing uh, what the fossil record can tell us about the origin and evolution of bipedalism, maybe the most logical question to ask to ourselves uh, is why did we start to walk bipedally? However, uh, I will refine it a, a bit and will ask uh, something like why did we keep moving bipedally or why did hominins become increasingly bipedal over the time and replaced uh, their less bipedal ancestors? Well, uh, any of them are big questions and, and difficult to answer, actually. Since the first uh, hypothesis proposed uh, by Darwin, there have been a bunch of other suggestions to address a possible reply. I have uh, listed here the most important hypotheses that try to explain why we first uh, started to, to work on two legs, uh, but I will just highlight the most widely um, accepted. So overall, uh, most uh, efforts to understand the evolution of bipedalism have focused on the adaptive significance of the behavior. One of the most uh, important advantages is that uh, it frees the hands from uh, locomotor activities and then they can be used uh, for carrying things, whether weapons or, uh, or tools or foods, water and infants, etc. Another common ecological argument is related to life in an open woodland uh, habitat. There exists uh, the hypothesis that the earliest uh, hominins may well have fed in trees but adopted bipedal postures for traveling between them. Also related to the life on open habitats is the threat model, which highlights the need to see over tall grasses. There are several theories uh, suggesting that bipedalism arose as a postural rather than a locomotor adaptation for uh, foraging. This means that uh, early hominins would have uh, begun their bipedal behavior by, by standing during feeding, uh, either on the ground or in the trees. Well, finally, uh, some authors suggested that bipedalism would have uh, provided considerably uh, thermoregulatory advantages in physiological terms in limiting direct exposure to sun and facilitating the convective heat loss in a stressful open equatorial habitat. In any case, uh, none of the current hypotheses seems uh, completely satisfactory in its own, uh, and all of them have pros and cons, and probably there is not a unique solution, but a combination of one, two, or several of the theories. Well, uh, biological evolution is not a simple uh, causation. There may be multiple answers to the uh, evolution of bipedalism, but it seems clear that bipedalism remained uh, because it was beneficial for the fishing survival um, of the early hominins in some way or another. Thank you very much.